Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Thursday to you. Happy Friday Eve. Happy almost at the end of the work week. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I pray you guys received sweet sleep on last night and woke up with bells and whistles on. That's right. It's a great Thanksgiving Thursday. Hey there, Harpy Eva. Hey there, Harpy Andrea. Hey, Harpy Carolyn. Good morning. Hey, Harpy Troy. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Harpy Bernice and Harpy Anita and Harpy Aaliyah. Good morning. Harpy Elaine and Harpy Donald and Harpy Belinda and Harpy Doris, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Gathering of Hearts. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the Heart Gatherer, and this morning, you guys know we are continuing on in our series of Forgive, 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 and we are up to, hey, Harpy Pudding Pop, we are up to part nine um, on this morning, and so... As long as God says so, we are going to wrap this thing up on tomorrow. Hey, Heartbeat Yolanda and Heartbeat Nicole. And so yesterday we were on step two and we were talking about meditating on God's word. And when we begin to meditate on that word, that it causes us to change because now we're doing this day in and day out, night in and night out. And so when we are meditating on the word of God, that it will cause us to be prosperous and have good success. And so what does meditating on God's word do? It, it, it leads us into step three. And step three is simply this, transform my thinking. And so, you know, we're going to look at Romans 12 too. And we've looked at this earlier in the year, but we're going to look at it again. And it says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. And I'm going to stop right there first. And do not be conformed to this world any longer. And so it does not matter where you were this morning before you got on this stream. But now that you are hearing the word of God, it's time to apply it. Because when I hear, see the word, hear the word, and I understand the word, I can be transformed into the word. And so it says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer. So it's like game over. We will not be trans conforming to what the world says. Remember, I'm always saying that if you are not transforming into the things of God, then you are conforming to this world. And so it's game over for conforming to the world because we are supernatural beings. Remember, we established earlier in the week or the, the uh, last part of last week that we are supernatural beings. We're a three-part being. So I'm supernatural. I have supernatural powers. I'm a supernatural hero in the kingdom of God. And so it's says um a world any longer with its superficial values and customs but be ye transformed so let's look at superficial values and customs you know it the world's way is to stay in unforgiveness the world's way is to seek revenge the world's way is to stop speaking the world's way is to talk and gossip about you but that's not what we do when we're deployed from the kingdom of heaven and so I'm no longer coming into agreement with superficial values or customs but I'm being trained transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. So get this, if I'm meditating on the word of God day and night, it causes my way to be prosperous and gives me good success. This says that as I'm my mind is being renewed, then now I'm becoming spiritually mature. So I'm no longer petty. So I'm giving up the PhD in pettyology and now I'm picking up what God has for me. I'm mature in this thing. My responses are now different. And so then the verse goes on to say focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is. That which is good, that 
which is acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. And so when I begin to renew my mind, when I become spiritually mature, now I'm able to see what God's perfect will is for me. I'm able to discern what is good, what is pleasing, what is acceptable to God. And so when I become spiritually mature, my goal is to please the Father. And so now that I'm pleasing the Father, I know that holding unforgiveness in my heart is not what's pleasing to him. And so now I want to be pleasing to the father. And now because I'm spiritually mature, I recognize, realize that it's not about me. It's never been about me. And that if I will allow God to fight my battle, because he already told me that no weapon formed against me can prosper. But see, I can only get here when I allow my mind to be transformed to the things of God and not confirm forming to the ways of the world. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt and the hat to prove it. We've been living the ways of conforming to the world, but now we know who we are. Now we know where we're from, and now we fight like where we are from. We fight in the spirit realm. We fight with confession. We fight with fasting and praying. We fight with speaking in our heavenly language. We don't fight with emotions any longer. Game over for that because the scripture says that um, when I've realized that I don't do that I don't do this any longer it says and do not be conformed to this world any longer and so now I've heard the word on this morning which tells me I can't be who I was when I woke up this morning I cannot have any worldly attributes characteristics attached to me because that is not who I am so let's go back to um Joseph's account his mind was transformed. Remember we were talking about um, you can't get to the palace with a pit mentality. And so when we go back to Joseph's account, his mind had to have been transformed. Even when his family was still tripping, even when they saw him weeping, you know, it was still about them because in the back of their minds, they were concerned about, well, what is he going to do to us? Yeah, we see him crying. Yeah, we see him weeping. But we also remember what we did to him. But Joseph's mind had, com had completely been transformed. Why? Because Joseph saw the bigger picture. Remember, this is the year of the bigger and the better. You've got to see the bigger picture. You You've got to see the plan and the purpose that God has for your life. And I'm telling you that it has nothing to do with unforgiveness, that that's not attached to who you are. You are a supernatural being. You are made in the image of God. And so you have it in your DNA. It's flowing through your veins that you forgive. And so Joseph stayed focused on the dream. He stayed focused on what God had shared with him. And so you've got to stay focused on what God has shared with you. I know things have happened in your life and I know things have been done to you that weren't proper, that were not correct, but you've got to stay focused on the dream. You've got to stay focused on the spoken word that God has said to you. You've got to stay focused and not allow yourself to go back to the past. Remember, when you go back to the past, you can't hear what's happening in the present, which means you can't move on to the future. You've got to do the same thing as Joseph and stay focused on this bigger picture that leads to the bigger and the better. You've got to stay focused on what we declared at the beginning of this year that I'm going to have a stress-free 2023. You've got to stay focused on what God already said to you, what God has already shown to you. And you've got to remember that God said it's already finished. Remember, he's the author and the finisher of your faith. So he knows how this thing ends. Ends, and he says that it is finished. God is reviving your situation. So I know it may look dim. I know it may look dark. I know it may even look gloomy and it may even look like it's at the end. But when you transform your thinking and you have a lifestyle that has a heart that forgives, new life begins for you because you are now walking into a new chapter of life. And so you got to picture this. You know how when and if you go visit someone in a hospital and they are on a heart monitor and you see that when it's getting to the end it looks like it's getting to the end there looks like there is a flat line but then suddenly there's a heartbeat because God is on the scene and that is what's happening with you on 
today. It may look like your life has flatlined. It may look like the monitor says that it's all over. But I'm telling you on this morning that suddenly that your heart will start to beat again. Suddenly they're going to see the boo boom, boo boom. Suddenly you're going to feel the boo boom, boo boom. You're going to want to live again. You're going to be okay with having new beginnings because you're going to understand that new beginnings means that God still has his hand on you. And so I'm telling you on this morning to get your ears tuned on to start hearing your heart go boom, 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 because God still has something for you to do. God still has purpose for you, but it all starts with you releasing your offender. It all starts with you forgiving and walking into the ways of God. It all starts with you making a decision that I'm going to switch my brain. I'm going to transform my thinking and I'm no longer going to stay focused on what they did to me, but I'm going to stay focused on what God is doing for me. Glory to God. I'm not going to stay focused on what God did, what they did to me, but I'm going to stay focused on what God did for me, what God is doing for me, where God is taking me. Glory to God. I think I might be preaching to myself. I'm going to now get focused on the things of God. I'm now going to get focused on where God would have to set me to go. I'm switching my brain. Glory to God. And I'm meditating on his word that I might make my own way prosperous, that I may make my own way successful. Do you understand the depth of the love that God has for you? That he will send a word on forgiveness for almost three weeks to tell you that you've got to let that thing go because what I have in front of you that you might can't see right now is way bigger than where you are. It's way bigger than what you can imagine that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard that you can't even conceive what I'm about to do for you. So Heartbeat Nation, I'm telling you on this morning to let it go that it is game over for operating in unforgiveness. You are switching your brain. You are transforming your thinking. And now what you think about is forgive, forgive, forgive. This is what I want you to do. Every time you walk past a mirror today, tomorrow, and the rest of this weekend, look in that mirror and say, I have a heart that forgives. Speak to yourself. I have a heart that forgives, that I will no longer stay in unforgiveness, that I will use Joseph's account as an example, that Joseph didn't care about what they did for him. Joseph knew that it was preparation, that he was the prince of Egypt, that he was in control, that he was making decisions. He had control over his emotions, and that is who we are on this morning. We have control over our emotions. We're letting it go that we may live, that we may walk into this thing, that we may have a lifestyle, glory to God, of forgiveness. Amen. That's your daily dosage for today. Forgive, forgive, forgive part nine. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, glory to God, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website, GodWantsMeWhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, say God wants me whole. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, when you walk into forgiveness, wholeness just comes. Glory to God. Where there's nothing lacking, nothing missing. Come on, come on, say it again. Say, God wants me whole and I am getting whole by the minute. Again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the heart gatherer. I love you guys a whole bunch. Go out there and have a spec wow amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And I will see you back here tomorrow morning at 730 as we wrap this three three-week series of forgiveness. Uh, I'm telling you, we're going to be some grand people out here forgiving everybody, out here walking into our purpose, most importantly, out here being whole. I love you guys a bunch, and I'll see you in the morning.